Hey everybody, hope you're having a great night. We're going to have some fun. Uh, I know it's been a little bit tense here in the world, so hopefully you can kind of take your mind off some things by <laughs> learning about bathroom remodeling here on YouTube. So we're going to jump into it uh, here in a few minutes. I just wanted to kind of give you a high level overview of who I am and who Steve is. We're together home repair tutor and bathroom repair tutor. So if you don't know us, thank you so much for joining us tonight here on YouTube. Uh, first things first, let me know if you can hear down in the chat. So if you can hear me, let me know. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to have technical problems, but uh, most of the time those are limited these days, which is good. So I'm going to say hello to everybody in the chat. Here is what we're going to do tonight. So this is a live workshop. I am live talking to you here on YouTube, but we do have pre-recorded segments in the workshop. So we're going to have five segments tonight. And specifically, we're going to go over how to install a curbless shower using the Vim method. And I'm going to show you the five segments. Uh, and then in between each segment, we're going to have Q&A. And feel free to ask your questions in the chat, though, because Steve is going to be in the chat answering questions. We always get asked about tools and different supplies and stuff. So we do have Amazon links to those items. Uh, we do get a little bit of money from Amazon when we share those links, but it's at no additional cost to you. So I, we just wanted to be upfront and forward with you on that. Also, too, uh, a lot of things happen on YouTube with sponsored videos and stuff, and we've per we've had those before, but nobody is sponsoring tonight's video. So all the tools and supplies that we're using, nobody is sponsoring or, you know, encouraging us to talk about those items. So anyhow, I just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, we always like being perfectly crystal clear with, uh, with everybody, but thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. I see a lot of familiar folks in the chat i see let's see here we'll go from the top to the bottom i see mike mike buddy thanks so much for joining us cosme great to see you too joe one of our bathroom repair tutor members awesome installer out in new jersey uh, so thanks joe for joining us let's see here bernard thank you so much for being here Lori, great to see you too Lots of wonderful people here. A lot of folks from bathroom, our bathroom repair tutor group. John Feltz, 42 Bill D. Oren, always great to see you too, buddy. Let's see, Luis. Mama, good to see you. Jerry, another bathroom repair tutor member. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see here, and Mike. So, and Dale. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Dale, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to show you, again, here is what we're going to do. We're going to do five segments. They're very short. They're only like three, maybe four minutes each. And in each segment, you're going to learn a different facet of curbless shower installation. And again, this is the VIM method. There are many different methods, um, but we're going to go over the VIM method tonight. Okay, so when we're going over the different uh, pre-recorded information, feel free to ask your questions in the chat because Steve is in the chat. He is my co-founder over at Bathroom Repair Tutor, and he's going to be helping you with your questions, which is part of the reason why YouTube Live is so awesome. So let me show you a high-level overview of what we're going to be covering tonight. So first things first, we're going to show you how to frame or do the framing for a curbless shower. You need to build a recessed subfloor and this pretty much goes for any curbless shower now we're going to show you how to use the vim curbless shower pan so this is a great prefabricated pre-sloped shower pan we're going to show you how to install that in like three minutes it's really it's a cool kit that you can get over at vim's website then we're going to show you how to waterproof the walls using hydro band board which is a great foam board product in the fourth segment we're going to show you how to waterproof everything and basically make your bathroom and shower floor into a swimming pool and then we're going to show you some tips on how to tile we always get questions about how to plan the layout and what steps to take and how to start the tiling process so we're going to show you how to do that this is kind of a what the shower looks like 
it's really cool, and I think that you'll be really happy with uh, with learning some of these tips tonight. So, so let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. The first segment we're going to go over how to frame in a curbless shower pan area. So you always have to build a recessed subfloor for most curbless shower pans. That goes for Vim, Weedy, W E D I, and Schluter as well. So. All of them kind of follow the same principles in terms of how you recess the wood subfloor, except for if you're doing this over concrete. We wouldn't use this method, obviously, for that. So let's dive into the first segment. And this is only going to be like three minutes, so you can take a lot of notes and then ask your questions in the chat. And we're more than happy to help you out with that. Okay? All right, let's do it. Let's see here. So... Whoops, I actually showed you the wrong video. So the first step here is to make sure that your joists are level, and that's what Steve is doing. The next step is to bond three, uh, bond a two by four, three quarters of an inch below the top of the joist. And we're just using a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood to do that. You wanna use liquid nails between the two by fours and your existing joist. That's gonna help with the bonding. And then we use 16 penny nails, three and a half inch nails to secure these two by fours to the joist. The reason why we're doing this is because you have to make the floor recessed or three quarters of an inch at least below your main bathroom floor subfloor. And you want your curbless shower pan to be almost even with your main bathroom floor, hence curbless or barrier free. So as you're adding these two by fours to your joist and making sure they're three quarters of an inch below the top of the joist, you always just wanna use a level to make sure that everything does in fact remain level. Now sometimes you have a gap between your exterior wall and your framing like we did here. So you can just put some liquid nail over a piece of scrap 2x4, put a screw on it, tap that down in place, grab the screw and pull up on it and then you can nail it in place and then use 3 inch deck screws to secure that to your exterior framing. So you never want a gap between your framing members. You, they have to be completely structurally intact for what we're going to do next. And then he's just filling that in with liquid nails. So the reason why we can't have any gaps is we're going to be filling in the joist with these pieces of three quarter inch plywood. So you need to apply liquid nails to the recessed two by fours and then we're gonna put a piece of recessed three quarter inch plywood over top of those and nail them in place with eight penny nails. So it's two and a half inch penny nails. So anyhow, we're using these three quarter inch pieces of plywood, three quarter inch thick pieces of plywood to add our recessed subfloor. Now this is a center drain and we need to add some additional blocking for the support of the uh, of the plywood, but you need to leave enough room for an eight inch diameter hole uh, for the Vim curbless shower pan. So what we're doing here is just cutting our plywood to size, marking the center position with our rafter square, our speed square, and then we're gonna cut a hole in this that's eight inches in diameter. Now this bucket actually was eight inches, and so we lucked out. You just drill a hole in that, and then you use your jigsaw to cut an eight inch hole for the Vim curbless shower pan. Uh, that's really important. Then you apply your liquid nails on the two by material, and we're gonna nail this down again using our eight penny nails and our pass load framing nailer. So just wanna make sure everything is nice and level, and then fill in the gaps between the framing, again, using liquid nails, allow that to cure because what we're going to do is apply thin set over top of this and we don't want the thin set to go in between those gaps. So that's basically how you recess a wood subfloor to accept the Vim Kerblish shower pan. So it's a great product. We're going to show you how to install it next. Uh, I'm going to look at some of the chat questions here. Um, and see which ones, let's see which ones uh, you have so that we can kind of help you out. But lots of great questions in the chat and Steve is, as usual, doing a phenomenal job ans answering those. So let me see here. Um, let's, okay. 
Okay, Jerry, I like the VIM method until I knew the cost. It's roughly 900 bucks, but keep this in mind, with the VIM curbless shower pan system, you get the pan, and you do get the liquid waterproofing with that, so you get the waterproofing that you need to use in the, one of the next steps that we're going to show you. They're all expensive, unfortunately, so whether you're using VIM, Weedy or Schluter, they're all probably going to be in that $800, $900, $1,000 range just for the curbless shower pan and waterproofing. So really just kind of depends which one you're using. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see here. Okay, so Eric had a question. The one I am installing is in my basement over a slab. Should I watch? So the answer to that is, Eric, yes, you should definitely watch because even though some of this applies to installing over a wood subfloor, when we get into the waterproofing phase of the walls and tiling tips, all that stuff is going to apply to you whether you're doing it over a wood subfloor or a concrete uh, shower base in a basement. So I would stick around because you're going to learn a lot of really great tips. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to go into the next segment. Uh, and the next segment is going to show you how we actually um, do the Vim curbless shower pan. So we're going to show you that right now. Okay, so the Vim Curbless Shower Pan comes in one size, 60 inches by 48 inches, and you can cut it to any size that you want using a circular saw. It's just made out of recycled ABS. And the reason why you want to dry fit this is because you want to make sure that the drain pieces all fit together. And by the way, you want your pipe to run up through the floor. Now, because we had to cut this to size, we have to recreate the holes in the Vim, Vim Curbless Shower Pan. We're in that in a second, but we put them three quarters of an inch away from the edge. We countersunk holes through the pan and into our recessed wood subfloor because you're going to be adding screws to the Vim Pan. I know that sounds crazy in a shower, but we're going to show you why this makes sense. So we countersunk all of those holes and then we backfilled the the pan using 4XLT. That's Laterkrete 4XLT. It's a modified thin set and this is a really great thin set for our project. You want to dampen the wood subfloor so that the modified thin set, the moisture from it doesn't get absorbed into the wood subfloor. Then we scratch coated the 4XLT into the wood subfloor with the flat side of our trowel. And then we directionally troweled all the thin set after that. The directional troweling is important, as you see all the trowel ridges in the same direction, because that's going to allow us to set this pan over top of the thin set and compress all the ridges and get a really great bond between the Vim curbless shower pan and our wood subfloor. And again, we're just double checking that all of our drain pieces fit. And then we screwed the pan to the wood subfloor using four, number 14, one and a half inch screws. Now these are galvanized screws. Don't use drywall screws, please. And even though the Vim curbless shower pan is pre-sloped, we just wanted to double check to make sure that that slope was maintained after we uh, set it in place. So this all comes with the Vim kit. You want to put a bead of silicone underneath this drain piece and on top of the recess, but not in the holes of the Vim pan. And you put that in place, you compress it, and it's going to seal itself to the Vim curbless shower pan. And then it comes with these stainless steel screws that you just want to use a screwdriver to secure the screws to the Vim pan. So you get that in place. It's going to sit a little bit sub flush to the pan. There's also a rubber gasket that comes with this. You apply grease to it. There's also a beveled edge to it. That beveled edge should face upward, very much like with a weedy shower pan. And then you push this down into the recess between your pipe and the drain part and it comes with these different tools that you can use to make sure that that rubber gasket sits below the pipe because we're going to cut that pipe to size uh, actually we just cut a little bit off here because we're going to be waterproofing everything so we'll show you what the waterproofing looks like in the next segment so let's take a look here uh, i want to make sure that we 
get to some of your important questions and Steve is answering all your questions in the chat so please feel free to ask them so Bernard is it really safe to use on a second floor bathroom and the answer to that is yes the Vim curbless shower pan is specifically made for a curbless shower on a second floor over wood when we get to the waterproofing phase you'll see why this is a, a pretty rock solid method so it's great um, Eric, is the KBRS shower slope too thick to install as a curbless? Typically, we don't recommend using the shower slope as a curbless shower. Um, it is pretty thick, and the reason why you're using, uh, you're re usually you recess the subfloor such that it's flush with the joist, and then you use three quarter inch plywood on your bathroom floor joist. So you only have three quarters of an inch gap between the top of the plywood in the main bathroom area and the and the joists so the thickness of the pan becomes a factor when you're building a curbless shower and so typically that's why we just recommend using either the vim weedy fundo ligno or a schluter curbless shower pan they call them the thin tray pans over at schluter but great question um let's see here Money Making Mike, this is a great format too. Visuals with Jeff explaining and you answering questions. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Petar, greetings from Serbia. Thank you so much for joining us. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So lots of really great questions in the chat. Remember, if you have a question, you can ask it in the chat. We're here to help you out. And by the way, if you're a bathroom repair tutor member, you're going to have access to all the video, the full video tutorials that we're showing tonight in the video library. More on that a little bit later on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is show you the next step. And the next step is to actually waterproof the walls of this curbless shower. So this method, using hydroband board, can be used in any shower. It doesn't have to be a curbless shower. You can use it for a curb shower as well. And we really like this method, so let's dive in. Let's see here. Um, let me try to replay this. Okay, I think I can get it to play now. Just a minor little tweak here with our tech. Hopefully I can get it to play. All right. All right, let me go ahead and grab this file. I'm going to grab a different file here for our presentation and just drop it in here. Whoops. I'm really excited about this particular uh, method to waterproof the walls because um, I really think that it's easy and that anybody could do it. Okay. All right, so the first step with applying uh, hydroband board to the walls is to add a bead of the hydroband adhesive and sealant to the pan. It's not silicone, it's a, a special sealant for uh, hydroband board. And then you want to make sure you smooth that out uh, because you don't want any beads of the adhesive. Now, the thing with hydroband board, and this goes for any half inch board, is you want to add their screws only to the, the studs, which should be 16 inches on center. You need to add a screw every 12 inches along the stud. Now, we have a window in this bathroom, and we're just cutting the hydroband board using a utility knife. That's what makes it great, super easy to cut. It's a foam board with a fleece on both sides. You can also use an oscillating multi-tool to cut it. It's not absolutely necessary. And anywhere where a board meets a board, you need to apply the hydroband board adhesive and sealant. So again, as you can see here, we're just cutting that board to size around our window. The nice thing is you can smack the board to indent the back of it, the mark, the perimeter of your roughen valve and then you can just cut out that hole and dry fit the board around the roughen valve on the plumbing wall and make sure it fits flush with your half inch drywall so this is a half inch board again anywhere where the board's going to meet with the pan or adjacent walls you want to apply the hydroband board adhesive and sealant 
then set the board over top of that. This is just a preliminary waterproofing measure. It's not the it's not the final step. So again, we just screw the board into place. It's really that simple. So if you need the waterproof walls, this is an awesome technique. As you can see here, it just goes into place. If you need to scribe cut it a little bit to fit up against your drywall you can do that and once all of the boards are installed like in this case the next step is to waterproof all the corners and the seams using that same sealant i can't emphasize enough this is not silicone it's a special sealant and we're using using a quarter uh, a corner knife this is actually a weedy corner knife <laughs> that we're using to smooth out that that seal now the hydroband board adhesive and sealant has to span the seam and the corner by one inch on either side you also have to seal all of the screw holes and the seams so you just use a three inch putty knife to seal the seams and then What's nice is you have to just, this is a pro tip, you just have to smooth that out as much as possible so that the sealant doesn't interfere with your tile work, especially if you're using smaller tiles. The other really great pro tip is to apply this around your rough-in valve. So this is a grow a rough-in valve, and we sealed around that. We'll cut that to size when we do the tile work. And we added a secondary bead of sealant between the board and the Vim curbless shower pan. But again, this is not the end of the waterproofing in the shower pan area. We're gonna go into a great deal uh, and show you how to do that. You wanna apply about a quarter inch amount of uh, sealant to each screw hole. Now, we get asked this question, what do you do between your drywall and the waterproofing board, the backer board? So you can apply the hydroband board adhesive and sealant you can do that and later creed also makes a fabric so if you wanted to apply the fabric to that you could do that you could also add liquid waterproofing membrane so hydro band or even hydro barrier the hydro barrier actually comes with the vim kit so you could do that and you don't have to do this though if it's outside the uh, the shower area but it does make sense if part of that uh, backer board and drywall is in the in the shower area so that is how you waterproof a shower surround, uh, shower walls using hydroband board. It's really great, and I highly recommend it if you've never done a, a, a waterproofing system before. It's, it's a great product. It's only about 32 bucks for a three foot by five foot by half inch thick board, so it's very cost effective. The only issue is trying to find it. Sometimes you can't find it. And some distributors, if you're not an installer or professional, won't sell it to you if you're a homeowner. Now, that's not all the time, but sometimes they can be finicky with it. Other than that, Hydroband board is awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any. Steve is still answering everybody's questions in the chat, so I just wanted to let you know that you're probably getting your questions answered in the chat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just want to make sure. Okay, so Gilbert, hey guys, are all these items available on the West Coast like California? And the answer to that is you should be able to get Hydroband board out on the West Coast. And Vim, they're over in the Carolinas. So Gilbert, if you want to order the Vim pan, you can do that through their website and they'll ship it to you. So that's really not a problem. And if you want to have Hydroband board shipped to you, Steve actually put a link to that uh, from Contractors Direct. So Contractors Direct actually sells a seven pack of Hydroband board and it's very cost effective. We would highly recommend that you check that out. And again, they will ship it to you. Uh, so, you know, definitely take a look at the price point over at contractors direct but they're very competitive so let's see here jerry a recent client wanted a curbless shower without a glass door but she and i had concerns about water flowing into a near nearby closet or under a vanity how do you deal with this concern so the one thing to remember, and Jerry brings up a great question. By the way, Jerry is one of our bathroom repair tutor members. You always want the high point of your curbless shower to be outside, just outside the curbless shower pan area. The reason why is as water hits the shower pan, that high point acts as 
not like a dam, but it's going to prevent the water from hopefully going outside the shower. Now, the thing is, you want, and we're going to get into this in a second, you want your entire bathroom floor to be 100% waterproof if you're installing a curbless shower. So actually, that's a nice transition, and we're going to show you how to do that in the next segment. So this is going to be really cool. Again, it's only going to be about three minutes, but you're going to learn a ton and make sure you have your notepad available for taking notes. All right, let's dive into it. Okay, so <laughs> this is what it looks like. Uh, this is the hydro barrier that we're going to be putting over top of the, the bathroom floor. And this is a great product that comes with your Vim curbless shower pan system. And they, they give you the option between Hydro Barrier and um, I can't, I think it's like a MedPay, uh, a MedPay system uh, if you don't want the Hydro Barrier. Okay, so let's dive into it. Let's show you how to install all this. Uh, slight technical problem there so i think that i think i'll be able to show you how to do this in a, mo a moment okay so there we go so what we're doing here is we're going to show you how to waterproof using the hydro barrier the first step is to actually dampen your wood subfloor and we're going to be applying an uncoupling membrane to this using latacrete 4xlt this is a modified thin set and the modified thin set is necessary for the stratomat. Stratomat, again, is an uncoupling membrane. It prevents your tile and grout from cracking. You definitely want to have something like this over top of a wood subfloor uh, because it's going to help you out a lot. The thing is, you also want an expansion joint between the stratomat and the drywall. You need a quarter inch expansion and contraction joint. And you want to bond this to the subfloor using a rubber grout float. And then in this case, we had to fill all of the recesses in the strata mat with the same modified thin set. We're going to allow that to cure overnight. And you want this to be as flat as possible because, again, we're going to be tiling over top of this. But we allowed that to cure overnight. And then the next step was to apply Latacrete Hydro Barrier to the transition between the hydro band board and the Vim curbless shower pan. This is a liquid water proofing membrane. We're gonna add several coats of this to the Vim pan and the floor. So hang tight with me. It's, it's really kind of fascinating to see how this works and it's gonna help you with your project. But you wanna do this up against the strata mat and the drywall as well. Because again, you wanna waterproof everything. We allowed that first coat to dry or cure we added a second coat of Hydro Barrier because the next step is to apply a fleece to the Hydro Barrier. This fleece comes with the Vim kit. You just want to make sure that that is flat as possible against the pan and the walls because you don't want it to have any air bubbles between it and the substrate. And you don't want it to interfere with the tiling process. And then you apply another uh, a layer of Hydro Barrier over top of that. But again, we're adding fleece to all the transitions, you actually add corner pieces to the corners. So you have separate little tiny corner pieces that you're using. And then you're swirling the hydro barrier over top of the pan. But you don't want to fill in the holes that are in that drain piece. You just want to go up to the drain piece very carefully. And you want to waterproof the first foot outside that shower and then add this piece of fleece it's like a blanket that comes with the vim kit you want to add this over top of the shower pan and smooth it out by pulling up the four corners and running your hand over top of it if you do get an air bubble it's not that big of a deal you're just going to have to let everything cure cut out the air bubble and then waterproof over it the next day so it's not the end of the world if you get an air bubble but we applied another coating of the hydro barrier over top of that fleece and then we waterproof the strata mat using the same hydro barrier product and you'll definitely have enough hydro barrier to do this entire pan and the floor we let this cure and then the next day we actually came back and waterproofed this again so that we have at least three to four coats of hydro barrier 
in each corner of the shower pan and two coats minimum on the main bathroom floor. So this is a lot of waterproofing and we think that it's, uh, you know, a testament to the Vim system that you have so much waterproofing covering the, the pan and the floor. There's really, it's really hard to mess it up if you follow the directions and you add multiple coats of the product. So I just wanted to show you that. We just wanted to show you that because uh, we get a lot of questions like the one that we got here uh, tonight. Like, can you do this system over top of a second floor bathroom and the answer to that is yes because you're you're adding multiple coats of waterproofing and basically creating like a swimming pool out of your entire bathroom floor so let's see here uh i just want to make sure we got to the questions steve is answering all the questions um let me see here and uh, 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 uh t wiley you guys are the best thank you so much Let's see here. We just want to. I'm going through some of the questions to see if any kind of stand out. Tyler S. How can I hire you guys? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's kind of impossible at this point just because we're so busy with all the videos over on Bathroom Repair Tutor and other projects. Let's see, Dale, have you tried John's Manville Go Board? Appears similar to Hydroband Board. I found it in my area, Colorado, uh, at Dalt House, similar ceiling all around. So the answer to that is we have tried Go Board, Dale. It's a great product. It is very similar to Hydroband Board. And if that's what you have available in your area, you can definitely go for it. The only issue that some installers have had with GoBoard is that it can be itchy to install. So we recommend wearing a uh, long sleeve shirt, which shouldn't be an issue in Colorado if you're doing it in the wintertime. Um, and perhaps wearing a respirator if you have um, you know, sensitivity to um, different things. So like if, if you have asthma or allergies. So anyhow, like that's, that's a really great question. Um, let's see here. Eric, would one gallon be enough for a three by five by eight stall? And the answer to that is yes. So we only used one gallon of the hydro barrier in this shower. Orlando, what's up guys? Hey, good to see you, Orlando. Thanks for joining us. All right. So in the next segment, we're going to go over tiling. So we always get questions about how to tile showers and the sequence in which you would want to do that. So here is the sequence in which you would want to tile a curbless shower. So this isn't just us saying this, it's most manufacturers and it, it totally makes sense. So you want to tile the main bathroom floor first. You want to tile the curbless shower pan area second, then your main shower wall third, and then your either plumbing wall or opposite wall fourth and fifth. It doesn't matter which one of those two walls you do next. And there's a method to the madness and we're going to go into that here okay so let me show you whoop let me actually uh grab this video real quick um the reason why we get asked the the question about how to tile so much is because i that brings a lot of confusion to uh, people who've never set tile before and it's totally understandable because uh, if you've never set tile before it can be rather daunting to figure out everything okay so let's dive into the tiling the first step for us in this shower or this bathroom was to set these 12 by 24s over the bathroom floor now we're using a euro notch trial to do that we wanted to make sure that these tiles were square with the curbless shower pan that's going to be important we used 4xlt per the mixing directions uh, that later Crete set forth the euro notch trial gives us a nice thick coating of the thin set mortar over top of our waterproof strata mat and we definitely recommend using directional troweling. You want all the trowel ridges to face the same direction. We back buttered these 12 by 24s and we were trying to achieve 95% thin set coverage. We also use T-Lock, it's a great tile leveling system. 
this tile leveling system is great because it has an integrated uh, clip that has an integrated grout joint. Now we're going to be applying thin set to the bottom of the drain and to the drain itself. Not filling in the weep holes is really important. And we're just spinning that drain into place and squaring it with the back wall. Once that's in place, we added a scratch coat or flat coating of thin set. Then we directionally troweled. We're using white thin set. And we're building that up at the shower entrance so that we can actually make our mosaics flush with our main bathroom floor tile. And the reason why we're using white is because gray thin set can discolor marble. And we're just cleaning out all the joints with a stiff brush. And we're really happy with how that leaf mosaic turned out. Uh, it's really great. The next step was to tile the walls using our three by six subway tiles. And we're using a laser level. This laser level is from DeWalt. And we're just making sure the top edge of that tile meets up with the horizontal laser level. And we're using 16th inch horseshoe shims to get our grout spacing. But we're also leaving an expansion and contraction joint between the tiles and the adjacent wall. That's really important. So you can see here we got our top five rows in. They're nice and level. And that's really important to set up success for the rest of the wall, which is exactly uh, what happened here, even around this window, which was a pain. And this is what the shower looks like. It's awesome. The three by six subway tile looks great. The frameless glass shower door is awesome. This entire shower, all the tutorials for it, are available inside bathroom repair tutor. Like I said at the beginning of this workshop, if you're a bathroom repair tutor member, we wanted to show you where you can find these. Go to the video library and scroll down to the module which is labeled Tile Walk-In Shower Walls. If you click or tap on that, depending if you're on your phone or like a, a computer, you want to scroll down to the fourth section, which is labeled the Vim Curbless Shower with Glass Shelf. We use three by six subway tiles. There was a window in that shower, as you saw. And all the video tutorials are in sequential order. So you go from one, two, three, four, five, six. You just follow all those tutorials in order and you'll see exactly how to tile the shower, how to build this shower and tile it. And when you go into each module, you'll be able to click on the video and the full tutorial will show you exactly how to get the results. And even if you're not building a curbless shower, this particular module is great because it shows you how to use subway tile in a shower. So again, this is all over at Bathroom Repair Tutor and uh, you can check it out if you're a member. If you're not a member, we highly recommend that you do join Bathroom Repair Tutor if you've never built a bathroom before. And the video library is great. If you're a Platinum member, you also get our one-on-one -on -one help inside the private Facebook group and that is can be invaluable for folks. And so we wanted to just mention that tonight if you've enjoyed our videos and you think that you need help with your bathroom if you're a little bit lost you could check out bathroom repair tutor so lots of great questions i just want to jump into the chat see how everything is going here uh let's see let's see walsy gray what's the largest size tile you would recommend for shower walls for an amateur with with experience 12 by 24 24 by 24 so for somebody who is an amateur, but maybe you've got experience, I I personally think that 12 by 24s are not a bad tile to use because you're taking up a lot of space on the wall. You have flexibility with scribe cutting those tiles up against the shower pan or the bathtub, and it gives you a lot of flexibility, and you're actually going to be able to tile the wall pretty fast. So 12 by 24s, you should definitely be able to do that. Uh, let's see here. Dale, approximately how many hours did it take to build the subfloor and do all the waterproofing? Steve is so fast. I think I need about five times longer. So, yeah, Steve is super fast, uh, which is why he does a lot of the tutorials. And so I think that for that, it only took a few hours to frame in that wood subfloor. It's actually not that bad. If you've never done it before, it might take you the better part of half of a day. So like if you start at eight, it might take you, you know, until lunch to do it. 
Uh, but once you do a few of them, it's not going to take you that long. And then installing the shower pan, that doesn't take long at all, maybe an hour or two. The main thing with Vim is that you definitely want to dry fit it ahead of time because once you put all the thin set on the back of the Vim pan, it gets very heavy and it's hard to move. So you want to make sure that you dry fit it. In terms of waterproofing and everything, that did take a few days um, just because you have to let the hydro barrier cure in between coatings. So that's maybe one of the downsides to using this system, but um, it's very rock solid if you do it the right way. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, Jerry brings up a good point about the 24 by 24s. Um, so if you're setting tile, a lot of wet saws, it's hard to cut those. And even with like a, um, you have to get the right manual tile cutter. But if you're looking for a manual tile cutter that can cut 12 by 24s, we highly recommend looking at Montelites and also the Issue Big Clinker. Montelite, you can get the Master Puma over on Amazon. So that's that's a great manual tile cutter if you're looking to invest in one. Um, the store manual tile cutters can be kind of iffy, so uh, just make sure you you know, do your research on like a big box store manual tile cutter. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da. Okay, 42 Bill D, this is another good question. Steve, did you cut your first bottom row to get them level across the shower back wall? So great question here, and thank you so much, Bill, for asking. So if you've got a pre-sloped shower pan, like the Vim Curbless shower pan, there's going to be, and if you've cut it, you can do away with the little half moon shape that results by filling that in with thin set mortar. But if you don't fill it in with thin set and flatten out the perimeter or straighten the perimeter, you'll have to kind of cut your tiles to the shape of that perimeter. But that's something you can do with an angle grinder and a diamond blade. So you can use an, a diamond blade and angle grinder to cut those, uh, scribe cut those tiles. So that's a really, really great question. KSZ Porak, what about mesh tape in all the corners? So for the later grade hydroband board, you don't need the mesh tape. You just need the adhesive and sealant, the hydroband board adhesive and sealant. Now for the pan, yes, you do need the fabric like we showed. Uh, NA1DU for T-lock direction matter. Uh, so T-lock... The installation, uh, the installation of the tile. Let me see here if if this was addressed. T lock. Um, you want at least to if you're removing the T lock, the direction does matter. You want to smack the T lock in the direction of the grout joint so that you break the clips underneath the surface of the tile. Um, the direction of the tile, it doesn't matter how you set it. You just want to install the T-lock up against the edge. I don't know if that answered the question or not. Aiden, hey guys, sent you a video yesterday. Any tips on scribing smallish tile to a sloped ceiling? Hey, Aiden, yes, I totally got your video. We got your video. So Aiden is actually doing a really cool project with these, like, diamond-shaped tiles. And his question had to do with once you get to the ceiling, like he has a slope ceiling, what do you do with the tile at the slope ceiling? How do you figure out how to cut that? So one recommendation that I have is to take the tile, put it on top of cardboard, even a cereal box, and mark it over top of that with a marker. So basically you're going to cut out a cardboard copy of the tile, and then you want to put that up against your ceiling and then you can fold it down and figure out what the size of the tile should be so you don't have to waste the tile. So you can use like a cardboard cutout or a cereal box cutout and use that as a template to cut your tile to size. So that's one really suggestion that came to mind, Aiden. And hopefully 
Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm definitely going to, I'm sorry, we just kind of got tied up with pre preparing for this uh, presentation. So I was unable to email you back, but I'll definitely do that. Uh, Mama, I think I would rather pay you to do this. Otherwise, a fiberglass unit is an easy and waterproof alternative for me. I totally understand. Um, we mostly specialize in teaching how to build custom tile showers, but it's understandable. Eric, I plan on doing or decoupling membrane in the rest of the bathroom outside the shower. How would I make the transition given the thickness of the decoupling membrane ending at the pan? So... Uh, Steve actually just answered this, but he went on to say the extra thickness is actually kind of nice. It gives you a little bit of extra height at the transition and keeps water flowing into the shower. So the thing that we're emphasizing there with the, the extra height is, um, Eric, you actually want that extra height. You can always build up your tile in your shower pan to meet up with the tile that's over top of the bathroom floor. Uh, so if you have a little bit of extra height, like an eighth inch, let's say you're using like Dietra, not a big deal. And um, we can certainly help you out with that if you have those questions. Hey Aiden, thanks so much buddy for the super chat. Totally appreciate it. <laughs> and I'll definitely email you back with um, hopefully, oh, you're literally doing the template method, method now. That's awesome, okay. Let us know if that actually works out for you, Aiden. It should. I just figured it's better than um, wasting a bunch of those tiles, which look really, really expensive. Orlando, Montelite Evolution, what's the difference with P3? You know, honestly, I don't know, Orlando. I haven't looked into that quite yet. But anything from Montelite is high quality. The Master Puma has been around for quite a while, and it's really an awesome tile cutter and hasn't let us down. So even if you, know, if you get the, the uh, Master Puma, you should be good to go. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. One question for you is... Um, do you like this format? Do you like us being live? So I'm live and then Steve is live in the chat, but showing you clips of how to do things. Um, it's really important that we get your feedback on this because we want to make the experience, the live video experience, a good one for you. So not only educational, but helpful. So, you know, please let us know if you like this and we'll continue to do more workshops. Um, the other thing that we want to emphasize again is if you're doing a bathroom remodel, whether you're a homeowner or you're a contractor, definitely check out Bathroom Repair Tutor because um, we really think it could help you out. We don't want to see you make uh, mistakes that could be costly. So Eric, thanks for your feedback, buddy. We really appreciate it. Um, glad that you like the format and I we have a lot of ideas of how we want to do more workshops. It's just really good for us to get everybody's opinion on that and then kind of weigh it and see what, what you want. So, uh, Jerry, I like to see the comments. Thanks. Yeah, me too. I love seeing the chat and just how that develops and, you know, all the different questions and answers. And, and Dale, thank you so much. I'm glad it was helpful. And um, it looks like you like the interactive mix between live and the pre-recorded stuff. Um, let's see. Anthony, what type of waterproof seal would you guys apply on a flat roof for a mobile home? Honestly, Anthony, I don't know. That's not really um, – that's not something that we do. I wish we could help you out with that. Eric, I'm glad it was helpful. And please let us know if you have any questions. We're always happy to help you out. All right, so that's it for today's workshop. Hopefully it took your mind off some of the other stuff that's going on in the world. And uh, we really appreciate you dropping in. We know that you're busy, and we totally respect that, especially whenever we do these workshops. You've got other things going on in your life, so thank you for joining us. It's an honor to help out in any way. And uh, thank you, Eric. Eric Wallace, thank you so much. Mike, it was great seeing you. Bill, always great to see you. Joe, thank you. Bernard, thank you for joining us tonight. Really, really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next uh, workshop, hopefully sometime soon. Take care.